Mac Power Users, episode 494, Our Home Offices. Hello and welcome back to Mac Power Users. My name is Stephen Hackett. I am joined, as always, by my friend and yours, David Sparks. Hello, Mr. Hackett. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I am fantastic. I had so much fun with you. This is really weird, the way we recorded episode 500, Out of Time. Mm -hmm. So listeners aren't going to get it for a few more weeks, but we finished it. We got to spend some time in Illinois. Uh, I got to watch Steven take some Macs apart. That was fun. (laughs) Yeah, Max Talk was great. If you were there and said hi, uh, thanks for doing so. If you came to our show, it was just amazing. I'm really excited to share that in a few weeks. Yeah, I and I said this in episode 500, but I'm going to say it again anyway because it doesn't happen for a few more weeks. But I was sitting next to Stephen in line, and this person's like, hey, we need someone that can take the screen off an iMac. And it wasn't like Stephen said, well, I have experience doing that, or I used to be a genius. He literally just walked walked away with them. It's like someone saying, <laughs> "There's a building on fire. We need a fireman," and you just ran. It was it was amazing. You, the bell rang and off you went. <laughs> I'm very I'm good in very specific situations. <laughs> yeah, and it was very funny too because while you were doing it, you were like all business. Like at one point, I walked up behind you. I said, "Hey, I got this nice cool glass of water. Do you want me to put it on the desk so you can have a sip if you want?" And it was like you were having none of it. There was no nothing funny to that. All business. You're all business. Yeah. Anyway, good for you. Good for you. I, I'll, I'll put some links in the show notes. People can see these photos. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. And, and then, of course, you had the added difficulty that an increasing number of Mac geeks finished their lunch and just decided to circle around and watch you to see what would happen next. I have not ever had that experience of upgrading the inside of a computer as performance art, but, you know, you live and learn. Did you ever see the episode of Seinfeld where Kramer like spilled the M&Ms into the surgery? Yes. <laughs> I, I felt like there was a definite risk of that. You know, like someone having a, an errant piece of chocolate it, cake. M&Ms. Like going, it's the yeah. junior mint. Remember? Oh, yeah. Yes. J- junior mint. Yes. Oh, man. I couldn't let that go. I didn't want the email. You got to nip that in the bud. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot the exact uh, confectionery, but it was. Uh, but there were a lot of people eating chocolate cake around you fixing this iMac. And I'm thinking, what would happen <laughs> if a piece of chocolate cake went into Father John's iMac? Nothing good. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing good at all. Uh, we have a, a bit of news. Uh, one of the things we want to do, we occasionally hear from listeners, actually more than occasionally, that say, hey, the uh, show's great. I wish you would give me a notice when the show's published. I'd like to get the, the show notes separately. So... You have asked, we have answered. Uh, As an experiment, for a little while, we've set up a newsletter. And there's a link in the show notes. It's the MPU newsletter. It's not going to bomb you with information. But what it is going to do is when the show's published, you're going to get an email with picture, if there are pictures from the show, uh, show description, and all the links. So you can have all those saved to your inbox directly. Um, there is a fair bit of expense and time put into doing this. So we're calling it an experiment. We're going to see how many people actually want it. But if you do want it, sign up for it. We, we'd be happy to share it with you. Uh, there is a link in the show notes and, uh, and just go sign up if that's your thing. Yeah, I think this is going to be a, uh, a fun way to share our, our notes and everything with people in kind of a different format. You know, this is something that, uh, like you said, we've been asked a couple of times about it. I was like, that's actually a pretty good idea, and we're making a, a real effort, especially in our interview episodes, to include photos from our guests, you know, when it's appropriate, when they can share them. And so I think this will be a, a fun way to continue to make the show notes sort of a more rich experience. And honestly, for, for my point, I'm just trying to catch up with the automators because y'all, y'all do such a good job on the show notes over there. Yeah. Uh, I feel like uh, i got to step up my game here. <laughs> All right. Well... Um, sign up for the newsletter if you're interested. Um, it's in the it's in the links here. Uh, I'll I guess I'll put it in my post on Max Barkey when the post when the uh, when this episode goes up, and we'll put it in a few different places. We'll put it in a forum somewhere. But the um, uh, I think this will be fun, and uh, please go sign up if you're at all interested. So today we're going to talk a little bit. Actually, not a little bit. We're going to talk a lot about our home studios. We, we've kind of touched on this in the six or seven, now eight months I've been on the show about kind of how you and I get our work done. And we've talked a lot about our podcasting stuff. We're not really going to touch that today very much. But sort of the environments that we have created for ourselves 
uh, to get our work done, why we've made the decisions we have. And speaking of photos and things going into this, we have both taken some time. Uh, I took a couple hours yesterday. What you can't see in the photos in my office is the pile of junk I moved around, so it wasn't any of the shots. Um, but we've taken uh, some photos of our respective workspaces and put those on pages on our blogs. And my uh, hope is that I can continue to update this page over time because I, I, my studio is like a work in progress all the time. Yeah. Uh, and I thought it would be kind of a fun way to share where we get our work done and we could talk about the decisions we've made and maybe some things we would do differently if we could. Yeah, I mean, we started on this episode saying, well, let's just talk about the gear on our desks. But then as we both started thinking about it, we we both have studios and it, it goes bigger than just the desk. So we're going to uh, to try and hit it all today. We got a lot to cover here. We do. Uh, so let's start with uh, let's start with the desks and the chairs themselves. It's kind of the building blocks of any computer workspace. It's going to be a table or in my case, what is a an old door from my house. We, we bought my wife's grandparents' house three years ago, and we did some renovations on it when we bought it. And one of those included taking out what where was a door, now is just a bigger opening. And so I had this door in my garage, and then when I built the studio, I said, well, I, you know, I kind of need a desk, and what I had before was too small. And I remembered I had this door in the garage, so I cut it down to fit. Uh, the trick is... This is this is my top tip for using a door as a desk. If you have to cut it down to size, cut it where the where the doorknob hole is, where that is as centered as possible, and then you can route all your cables from your laptop or your iMac or whatever, you know, down under the desk through the doorknob hole, and it makes it makes a great way to to cable manage. Yeah. So I've been I've been really really happy with it. Yeah, that's 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 pretty clever. Um, I like that you can see the hinges. You know where the hinges go. <laughs> yeah, like just in case you could repurpose this as a door. I could, it's about six inches shorter than it used to be. So it's not a great door anymore. <laughs> but yeah, you can see in the first photo on my blog post, like you can see where it, you know is, this house is an old house, right? So people have painted the door frames not that carefully. So there's like splashes of paint on the edge. And the beauty of it is I've scratched it and gouged it and stuff. And, like, it doesn't matter. In fact, the kind of more beat up it is, the better, like, the more I love it. So I'm not afraid of hurting it. And it's just on a pair of cheap IKEA legs. They're not fancy sit-stand legs. I want to talk to you about standing in a minute. But uh, it's just a very basic deal, and it, but it meets my needs really well. No, yeah, I, I totally agree. And the... um. And I went really fancy with my desk because <laughs> I uh, years ago when I was still at the firm, but I was working out of a corner of the bedroom. The one thing I wanted was a better desk for working at home. I had uh, originally a um, a Target special, you know. Sure. It, and it was glass, and every time I'd look at the desk, I'd look through at my legs. And I don't know, it just was weird to me. And then glass is just a, <laughs> glass is a bad surface. When you write on glass, it's too hard to kind of write on. I don't like the, you know, like if you put a piece of paper on glass, you start writing, it's a strange feeling for me. And anyway, I, I got the desk for like, you know, $50 at, at Target. And I decided to go the exact opposite with, with a, um, a fancier desk. And I got the next desk Terra. Mm. Um, next desk is one word. I'm not sure if they're still for sale or not. Um, but there's a bunch of, of great sit stand desks now. I guess if you were going to get one, I'd say go to Wirecutter or, you know, even IKEA sells them now. Yeah. But uh, the principle of a sit stand desk is uh, it's got a little motor in it. Mine, the uh, a piece of the motor is screwed to the bottom of the desk, and the other piece is, is in the legs, the the gears and whatnot. And I really like it. I you know I've had this now, I don't know six seven years, and it's not a gimmick. I mean, I it, especially with an Apple Watch when it tells you, hey, now's the time for you to stand up. I I do it all the time. I do it while I'm podcasting here. I'll I'll mute the mic and then um just like you know crank it up and then stand for a while, and it, it's great. Uh, I like I like working that way, and sometimes when I feel like I'm in a rut, I'll just change my desk to sitting or standing, you know, the opposite of whatever I'm doing, mm -hmm. and it helps. I uh, it, it sounds like a gimmick, but but it, for me, it's turned out kind of nice. Yeah, I found it. They they're still around. They changed their name, but this desk is is what you have. This is something I I want to change about my studio. I would like to replace the legs 
under this desk with sit-stand legs. Like I said, IKEA has some options. There are lots of good options. I'm not going to go real in detail in the show notes this week with like specific things, although I have your desk in there. Because there, a lot of this stuff, there's a lot of options. Um, but I would like to be able to do this more easily, and and I don't really have a way to do it right now. So this is something that's it's kind of been on my mind for a while, but I think maybe later this year I'm going to uh, – take this desk apart and and change it where I can stand. I, one of the things I, I did was I got the bamboo top and I've never had a bamboo surface to work on before. And it's, it's been fine, you know, and it's fast growth and it's hard enough. Although when I was doing the big studio setup a, a year or two ago, when I set the studio up, I had my daughter helping me and I was, I was putting, I was attaching the iMac you know, with the visa mount to the monitor arm mm-hmm. and had her helping out and she dropped a piece of it and there's a dent on the desk. Mm, yeah. I see it every day, man. I see it every day. And it's totally my fault because I didn't explain to her how to do it. And But it's just a reminder of the imperfections of life. That's what I tell myself. I, mean, I got holes drilled in mine, so it's, I, not, it's not even <laughs> that big of a dent, but I yeah. look at it all that's, the time. That's the thing. Fact, Once you have the first dent, you, your heart's already been broken, right? So now you can do whatever to it. And now yeah, it's good. yours. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, but I, I really like this desk. It's great. I, I did a, kind of a desk-related item is I did an upgrade a few months ago. I sent you a picture of it at the time, and I'm super happy with it. I bought, you know how you've got the holes drilled in the desk for cable management? Yeah. This This desk has two holes, one on either side. And some of the cables, like a crazy man, I just run up the back because I have the the visa mount thing bolted to the desk for the iMac, and you can run cables up the back side of it and barely see them. So it, it actually is less intrusive to do it that way than to run it through the hole and across the surface of the desk. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, one of these holes has just been empty for some time. And on Amazon, for something like I think it was less than $20. I'll find the uh, the exact product I ordered and we'll put it in the show notes. But it's a um it is a it is a desk hole sized wireless charger. Mm. So it just drops into that hole. It's got a, a surface on it, you know, it's like a a, a chi charger and it's got a USB cable going out the other side that I plug into one of the USB ports on the bottom of my computer. And now I can just lay my phone on top of it during the day. And it charges up. It's great. That is pretty, that's pretty cool. Yeah, desk hack. I, I had before that, I had one of the, the ones where it's kind of vertical and you lay it in there and it charges. Mm-hmm. But I don't really want my phone, you know, talking to me while I'm working. So yeah. it's, it's face down. Good. It's it's fine. It's fine there. What do you use for a chair? Um, this is one I think I have talked on MPU before, but like when I was at the firm, um, I went one day because I the, the chairs they had for me there were the worst and I just got frustrated. I rage bought a chair. I went to Staples, which was down the street and bought a $300 chair. I don't know. It's got memory foam on the butt and it's got ventilation on the back. And I'm sure I could have a fancier, better chair. But since I bought it with my own money, when I left the firm, I took the chair (laughs) and uh, and I'm still using it to this day. The the one big modification I made is I took the arms off. I don't, Mm -hmm. I don't want arms on my chair, man. I don't, I don't need to rest my arms. I got to work. I have a fancy chair. Uh, I own a Herman Miller Aeron chair and obscenely I, – I bought this chair four years ago. I'm still upset about how much I paid for it. Like it's, it's ridiculous. But uh, I had one at a previous job. I really liked it, and I knew that it was comfortable for me for long periods of time. And you know, the truth is I, I would love to say that you know I stand at work and I get up and I walk around – but there's a lot of days where I'm just here recording and editing audio, and I spent a lot of time in this chair. And I'd started when I first went independent. I had my first home office. You know, I had just like a cheap Target chair, and it was bad. <laughs> you know, my back hurt, my legs hurt. Yeah. And so I sprung for this. It was actually like the first big thing I bought when I quit my job, and I fully expect to have this chair for a decade or, or longer. And uh, there are a lot of Officers, again, like a lot of this stuff, like the wire cutter has good reviews. I had experience with this one, so I knew that I liked it. I'm sure there are things that, that may have worked better for me or for other people, but I've been really happy with it. It does have arms. Uh, they don't come off very easily, but I don't mind them. I actually, one thing I do, uh, as you see in the pictures, I actually have a second desk 
And sometimes I work over there on a project and it's kind of nice like, just to have a chair that kind of works both places and the arms fit under the desk uh, if I want to get up close. But uh, that's uh, that's me. It's all black because that's what color chair should be. You should not have a blue or an orange chair. It should be black. No, I you know, I get it. Like in some ways, it sounds to me like your chair was the same as my sit stand desk. It was my first st- step towards freedom. You know what I mean? It was like, exactly. oh, wait, I'm, I'm spending real money on this. I'm taking this seriously. And and honestly, it was great because when I did like make the transition, I was already set up at a great desk and it just feels I don't know. Like, I would like to use this desk for the duration. I don't know uh, if that's going to be the case or not. You know, who knows with electric motors and gears. But the um, I really love this, and I, I have warm feelings toward it. That's good. I mean, you spend a lot of time in there, and, and you should have something that works for you. All right. On the desk, let's start. Uh, you had an idea, and I think it's a good one. Let's start from the ground and work our ways up on the desks. Like, okay. what do we got attached to these things? And <laughs> we're, we're going to leave podcasting out of it because... Podcasting is great for podcasters. Most people listening to the show don't, aren't podcasters. Yep. So. We have links to our gear pages in the show notes. We've talked about that before. So yeah, I'm going to start next to the leg of the desk. So next to the leg of my desk, I have a APC battery backup. Uh, I have the NS1080. I'm putting in the show notes two things. One, APC's website for selecting how much power you need. So you can go in there and tell it what you want to plug into it. And, uh, and then I have a K-Base article about using a battery backup with your Mac. Like, you can run a USB cable from a lot of these battery backups up to your computer. Mac OS is supposed to, like, detect when the battery when you're on battery backup and, like, shut your computer down. I've never had it work in my testing, but it makes me feel better to have that USB cable plugged in. I really have this not so that I can keep working if the, if the power goes out, um, but really just to kind of protect my iMac and my audio equipment from any brownouts or little dips in power. You know, our utility company has some struggles sometimes in Memphis, and I live in a really old neighborhood, and, you know, sometimes we have these little blips, and I really just want it to even it out. So there's occasions I'm just sitting in my office, and the lights don't even flicker, but that battery backup, you know, clicks on for a few seconds, and it's like, ah, yes, you know, it's protecting me from something I can't see. And uh, it's definitely not a... It's not a must-have for everybody, but if I think if you have a desktop computer and you have some other equipment, you know, sort of in your setup, it's not a silly expense. And honestly, it's really uh, a pretty reasonable expense compared to you know something like like an iMac or, or you know a Mac Mini with a display. For me, I think it's worth the money. Yeah, this is a I call mine the Katie Floyd battery backup. Yes, because <laughs> I always think about her because <laughs> she kind of shamed me into buying it. But I, uh-huh. when I did, I bought two of them. I put one at the bottom of my my uh, my sit stand desk, so everything uh, on this desk goes through it. And and you know, like the scanners and stuff don't need to be attached to it, but the sure. but the backup drives and the iMac are all attached to it. And uh, these battery backups, the way they work, the way a lot of them work is only a couple outlets on the back are protected by the battery. And so for me, the only thing I've plugged into that is the the iMac and my USB amplifier. Yeah. Everything else, on you know, it's got five or six outlets on the back that are not battery protected. They're just regular surge protected. And so that's like my lamps are in there, you know, a couple of my headphone amp, a couple of other things. And so you, when you set it up, just pay attention to that. It's really easy. And... This is my first one. I've had it several years. Most of the time, you can get a really long life out of these. But some of them, if the batteries do fail, you can like swap out the batteries. kind of depends on what you are looking at. I think it's a pretty reasonable thing to add to your setup, you know, for a little extra layer of protection. Especially if you live in a part of country. Like I know with Katie, you know, b- being yeah. uh, in, you in know, Florida. A, a Florida, right? Like alligators through to your, chew through your power cables and a hurricane comes through every couple of weeks, so you want to be protected. Yeah, and in fact, I when I did bite the bullet and buy one, I bought two, and the other one is in my network closet. So mm-hmm. the router and the um, the Eros, the, the 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 primary Eero, is on that, and I figured that'd be good. So if we do have a short power outage, the internet stays on, and mm-hmm. I, so whatever I'm doing continues working. That being said, I think only once have I ever got the message that it went on and then it, it immediately went back off shortly thereafter. But I guess that one time it saved me, you know? Yeah. I mean, a UPS is like an airbag, right? Yeah. You don't want to use it, but it's good to know that it's there. 
All right, moving up, moving up the legs of the Stephen Hackett doorway desk. <laughs> what do we see next? Uh, I, well, it's not really tech, but I've got a file cabinet under one end of it because, you know, I've got cables and paperwork and, you know, when you own a, a business or two, you get a lot of stuff you have to file and that's all in there. It's just like an Ikea, you know, rolly around file cabinet thing that locks. Under the desk, I have a cable management tray that I bought from Ikea. It's just... It kind of, it's made out of like, you know, thin metal and it, it just screws into the bottom of the desk. And in there, I, you know, can can lay a bunch of cables. I have my time machine drive hanging out in there. I have a little network switch in there because I only have one Ethernet drop in my studio, but I have several devices that I want on Ethernet. So I just have a little five port gigabit switch under there. It's just a nice place to uh, to put stuff so it's not hanging down on the floor. My... I don't know if you were talking about philosophy yet, but my philosophy is cables should be neat and tidy. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, it's weird, right? You wanted, uh, And I'm actually a little shamed, but I, I wanted to be truthful in my studio photos. You can actually see in the, the shot of my desk, you can see some cables hanging down. Part The three that you see kind of route from under the table over to where my laptop charges on top of my file cabinet. So, like, you know, none of us are perfect, but it's... You know, we all just want to be better people, David, and I want to aspire to be better and better at cable management. So even I have a few small flaws in my setup, but it's better than stuff hanging hanging out down everywhere. And I think if you do have things like like a standing desk is a really good example where you're going to have some you have cables that are are moving effectively, right? Because yeah, the, you, need, the, the, you need some slack. Yeah, you need some slack, and as long as that's tidy, you know, I'm not saying everything's got to be. Uh, Velcro to the back of a desk like we don't see anything, but I think it should just be tidy. And the a benefit of that is when something goes wrong, so like a, a USB cable is acting up, or you need to you know reroute something. If you've taken some time to make it neat, then uh, you know future you well you know when your future you is troubleshooting, it's uh, maybe not as bad to go in there and deal with something. So a little bit of, of Velcro will go a long way. All right, so I just want to call Steven out because I'm looking at the pictures on his website. What he does not have is a picture of the underside of his desk. Yeah. So he claims to be this cable maven, right? Wow. But, you know, the emperor, I don't know if the emperor is wearing clothes or not because you haven't shown us. So I think between now and the time this show publishes, there should be a picture of the underside of your desk. There. I will I will add one to the studio page after we record. You have my word. Okay. So now I that being said, I have I have laid myself bare. I have put the underside of my desk on the internet. Okay. Have you have you seen this picture? Uh the one with the hard drives double sided taped to the underside of the desk? Um well they're not double sided taped, but they are connected to the underside of the desk, yes. Okay. I've seen that picture. It's just in my memory though. I don't have it in it, front of me. If you go to um gear on my the, on my website the page, and scroll to the bottom, you're gonna see the whole thing. Ah, uh, yes. All nicely labeled. Okay, so you have time machine drive, the desk motor obviously. Yeah. Uh Surge protector, a bunch of stuff. So how is it? Is Velcro? No, I, guess? I started with Velcro. And so I got like industrial Velcro, Home Depot, mm-hmm. and I had a drive that failed. And I went to pull the drive off. And what I learned is industrial Velcro is actually industrial Velcro. And <laughs> and getting the drive off, I felt like I could hear things cracking on the inside as I was pulling it That's off. That's not good. <laughs> um, but, but that was an already dead drive, so I didn't mind. So now what I use is that 3M um, stuff you, I forget what they call it, it's magic strips or something, mm. you attach it, and there's a pull tab. That's great. And so when you go to remove it, you pull the tab and they come off and it works fine. So I use that to attach these little um, uh, drives that I buy off of Amazon. I'll put, I'll put a link in the show notes, uh, but they're just, you know, they're little drives and they, um, you can get them like anywhere within three to five terabytes, but I have a, I have one there dedicated for time machine. I have another one dedicated for archive. Also underneath, I have attached a powered USB hub that I bought many years ago, but continues to faithfully work. And that one was the, whatever was recommended. And I've got links for this all on this page on my website. I'll put a, a link to that in the show notes, but it's um whatever was recommended by wire cutter at the time. And then, um, and then I've also got under there some like various power supplies for the scanner. I've got two USB hubs because I've got one that is like used for stuff attached to the computer. And the other one is just one of those anchor powered hubs. 
So when I want to run a cable up to the top of the desk to you know charge an iPhone or whatever, um, mm-hmm. I can do that. I, I may have a new picture up as well by the time this uh, this show airs because since I took this picture, I've added a couple things. Um, I am an Elevation Lab junkie. Um, whenever they send me an email, quite often I end up buying something from That's them. Quite the drug. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, I I don't buy the real expensive stuff, but they I did buy the Elevation Lab shelf, which was a twenty dollar piece of plastic in essence, <laughs> but but very well made, and it's it's a um, like a self contained shelf that you can attach to the bottom of a desk like mine because it's just a flat desk and it comes with Velcro and screws and you know Elevation Lab gives you everything you need to make it work, and it's got a nice hole in the back so you can run cables Ooh, into it. I like this. And so I have attached one of those to the bottom of the desk. And what I've done now is run all of those charging cables into it so they're not junking up the top of my desk. And I can just yank, I can charge USB-C, lightning, micro USB, whatever, right out of that shelf when I want. And then also sometimes I'll stick a pad of paper or something in there. But what I really want it for is a way to to get any charging cables off the top of my desk. Ooh, I like this a lot. I I think I I I need one of these. I thought you would. I figured this would be right up your alley. Yeah, you're. I'm spending twenty four dollars right now. Is it twenty four? <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, it's. I mean, it's really not much when you get it, but yeah. But they do it right, you know. And there's something to be said for that. Um. Anyway, so so I've got this thing on my desk. But the other thing I did that's kind of interesting is uh, this is podcast related. Um. So I've got off of my USB pre two the the preamp for my mic, there's a headphone jack, but I always hated having the headphone cable stretched across the desk while I'm podcasting. I would get caught up in it. It'd get between me and the keyboard or, or once in a while it would like just barely touch the trackpad, but it would register as a touch. So then all sorts of weird things would happen. (laughs) So what I did was I took a, an extension, a a headphone jack extension cord. I bought off Amazon. I bought a nice one and I just ran it under, under the, I plugged it, into the device, I ran it all the way under the length of my desk, and then I use uh, something that you're going to hear quite frequently today, and that is gaff tape. Like, I love gaff tape, and I ran it with gaff tape out to the front of the desk. So there's essentially a headphone port under my desk to my left, and the these headphones, the the um, the jack on the cord on the headphones come out the left side, so I can just plug it in there and plug it into the headphones, and I'm good. Very clever. That was that was a that was a big download of all the stuff because the stuff on my desk is largely under my desk. Yeah, there's, there's more going on under the surface than than it looks. A desk should be like an iceberg, is what we're saying. You know? Yes, yes. <laughs> or a duck always paddling under the water. This episode of Mac Power Users is brought to you by One Password. All of us have just endless number of accounts. I had to make a new. Uh, it's a long story. I had to make a, like a replacement account the other day for for some stuff at home, uh, for like one of my kids' school things, and I realized that uh, like I opened one password and it, and it wasn't in there. The old password wasn't in there, and I just I was horrified that Past Stephen hadn't done his job and put this password into one password because that's where I store all of this stuff for a bunch of good reasons. Because one password makes it so I don't have to remember those passwords. I just can log in. My MacBook Pro, I can do that with Touch ID. On my iPhone or iPad, I can do that literally with my face because 1Password always supports the newest technologies from Apple. And if I'm on my Android phone or if I've got a Chromebook out, it works there as well too. And I share a bunch of these with my spouse. In fact, this one school password thing we needed to reset, uh, it wasn't in my wife's account. It wasn't in our shared family vault, but a, a lot of other stuff is. And that's great because we all have accounts that we share with uh, significant others or our kids or or other people in our family. And instead of having like text passwords back and forth or or anything like that, they can all be stored in a shared one password vault. So anyone has access to them, anyone can update them. So when I recreated my account on the school website and saved everything, you better believe that it is now in our shared family vault. One thing I mentioned a second ago that I love about 1Password is how hard the team works on keeping 1Password up to date. Um, and we've talked about the Brave browser before, which is sort of based on the Chrome uh, browser, but it has um, a bunch of all the Google stuff kind of pulled out of it. Uh, there's a blog post up on the 1Password blog talking about Brave and how 1Password integrates with that. A pretty new product, but 1Password 
is there so you can have all of your accounts with you wherever you are. Head on over to onepassword.com slash MPU to learn more, and you can sign up for a free 30-day trial. And when you sign up, you'll get 20% off. That's onepassword.com slash MPU. Before we move on, two clarifications. Number one, do you have anything under your desk? Just the cable management stuff. All right. No, no docks or chargers or anything like that. All right. Second question. You have not commented publicly on my cable organization under my desk. Oh, you need some sort of um, judgment. Yeah, I do. I know I need affirmation is what I need. I don't know what you're going to give me. Affirmation is what I have to give because oh, good. you have a lot good. of stuff like all of us do. It's neatly organized. It seems like you could uh, change you know, stuff around if you needed to. And, uh, you know, you've been through the adhesive wars, you know, you're not using zip ties anywhere because, you know, cable management should be a fluid experience over, over a desk's life and things change, you know, just, I mean, you add a new display like every three weeks over there and you, you need to be able to change stuff around. Yeah. I figure out where I'm going to put my fourth one. I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm going to come to your office and it's going to be like the scene in uh, Dark Knight, you know, where like uh, he walks in and Lucius Fox has like the 5,000 screens. Yeah. You know, that's you soon. It's not lost on me. I Sometimes I walk in here and look at all these screens and say, what have you done? I'm like, what have you done? But then when I work, it's really nice. So I'm mm-hmm. not going to worry about it. Okay. So we're now we're to the top of the desks. You go first. Let's, well, let's talk. I'm going to talk about the computer first. That's like, that's the highlight, yeah. right? That's the center yeah. of our setups. And I'm using the entry level iMac Pro for reasons I've talked about a lot of places. I had an older 5K. I went to upgrade it. The new 5K iMac was too loud under load for my needs as a podcaster. And so I switched up to the entry level iMac Pro. And I say this with all sincerity, it's the best computer I've ever owned. I genuinely love using it. And it has been unbelievably reliable. It's silent. The Really, the only time I ever hear it is if I'm transcoding like 4K video and Final Cut, which I do every so often. But in my day-to-day life, it's, it's just as fast as ever it's ever been and as silent as it was the day I got it. And I, I really love it. Yeah, I agree. I have, I have the same computer. I did upgrade the internal drive to two terabyte, mm-hmm. but other than that, it's the basic entry yeah. level. And, um, yeah, I, I think I'm going to get many years out of this computer. I, I heard you talking on connected. I was just listening to it as we were prepping for today's show that you said, well, I hope this isn't a one and done computer. I hope not. <laughs> and it just terrified me when you said that. It's like, it never even occurred to me this could be a one and done computer. Cause it's just like, it's so perfect for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I think it'll stick around. Uh, I, I don't think that's going to go away. The, the Mac pro is so far out ahead of it. I think, I think it feels like a nice middle ground between the iMac and the Mac pro a hundred percent. Now I have uh, elected to go with the um, with the monitor arms for all of my devices. I really like setting height, but but you've gone a different route looking at these pictures. So my iMac Pro sits atop a first generation time capsule and a first generation Apple TV. It turns out that they are the same like surface area, so they sit squarely on top of each other. Yeah. And they are as deep as the foot of the iMac. So the iMac's not going to like rock off the back of them. And it, it got the height where I wanted the iMac Pro, you know, where it's sort of uh, correct posture. And it was nerdy enough that I kept it. <laughs> so it's a. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like it's like a symbol, symbolic, you know, this computer is crushing the, com- the prior computers mm-hmm. under its boot. It's, I don't know, it's a, it's a little intense for me, really. Well, it works. And, uh, I did it when I first when I first got my 5K iMac at this desk because it was a little low and I, I figured I'd pick up something nicer and that was like three years ago and they're still here. I've kind of just adopted this as my computer stand. Now you also have on top of your desk to the left of your iMac some dials and plugs and things. What are is that your your podcasting gear? Yeah, so I've got a, a headphone amp and then I have a USB pass through box with a power switch, so I don't have to unplug or replug my audio interface there's a switch back here that turns it on and off just cuts power to it i didn't like unplugging and replugging something several times a week sometimes several times a day because i don't listen to music through my podcasting rig i just just use the imac speakers and uh this kind of makes that a little bit easier and i feel like i'm not putting undue stress on anything by just cutting the power on and off and you're a guy with the mouse on the right and the trackpad on the left that's right Uh, a logitech mouse on the right and then the apple magic keyboard and the magic trackpad 
to the left, really just for panning and zooming and logic. When I edit, I don't really, pref- I don't prefer the trackpad for all input, but it's really nice when you're editing just to kind of zip around quickly your timeline just with a couple fingers. Yeah, I've gone all in with the trackpad. I've tried mice and I, I even tried to use a big drawing tablet for a while and that I my fingers have the trackpad underneath them with better touch tool you can add additional features and um I'm 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 liking it. I also have on mine rather than the uh, condensed keyboard like you have. I have the one with the full number pad mm-hmm. which I which I was thinking about getting rid of. I mean you get the dark one with the iMac Pro so there's a certain part of you that just wants to use it for a while. But um, as I go deeper with some of this automation tools like Keyboard Maestro, having those extra set of keys, basically the, the number pad for me is a bunch of automation triggers. Like if I need to respond to a, um, an email concerning a uh, learn.max Sparky course and I hit control one, it takes me exactly to the web page and logs me in that I need to do that. And like stuff like that is really nice. Yeah, for me, I just wanted everything as compact as possible. So I went with the... I wish they had a black one so it, it matched my computer, but they don't. Yeah, it's cool. Um, I, th- I think we'll save toys for the end if we have time. Okay. Um, but we do have stuff on our desk, like kind of toy stuff. Uh, um, a, a lot. <laughs> a lot of stuff. You, you have a lot. I, I don't have as many as you do. I love but... knickknacks and things. Like... I don't know. You can, at the very least, you can look through the pictures. I want to talk about the VESA arm situation because you do this. Jason Snell does this. Yeah. And I kind of want to know your reasoning for it. And the big question I have is, don't you just adjust its placement like all day, every day? Because that's all I would do. No. It's In fact, I feel bad because I took the pictures. I saw your pictures. I'm like, oh, I got to do the same thing. And I don't know if the pictures that ultimately are up when this show publishes will show it, but there's a little uh, angle between them because I, I tilted one and didn't adjust the others. But largely, once they're set, it's kind of set and forget. The only time I really adjust them is when I need to get behind the iMac and I can't seem to find the right port. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes you know where it is, but you can't reach it. With the Visa mount, it's very easy to just tilt it and look back there. Mm-hmm. So, And do you know what arm you're using? Yes, I'm using the Amazon Basics arm. It's just the okay. the the standard Amazon one. It does bother me to look at my desk and see the Amazon logo <laughs> on these arms. I have to admit, I have thought about like covering it up with tape, and I know that sounds a little manic, but it, it it's not beyond the possibi- realm of possibility that that will happen at some point. Um, I should have bought one arm with three posts on it. They, I think they make one instead because I've done this haphazardly. I have three arms, so it's it's kind of crazy. But but I like them, and they're fine. And what I like is having the space underneath. You know, you don't have all that space taken underneath your computer. Yeah. And I and I like setting the tilt and setting the um the height with mm-hmm. the Amazon ones. They come. I mean, all of them come with a like a Allen wrench that you can kind of set the tension because like the iMac Pro obviously is much heavier than these uh, chintzy Dell monitors I have attached. Right. Uh, but but you can get it set very easily, dial it in and they don't they don't move on me if I leave them alone. Good. Yeah, I'd imagine the iMac Pro is probably at the upper limit of its weight capacity. <laughs> it's a heavy computer. Yeah. I I've thought about it and with the iMac Pro you can uh you know, you can change it. You can take the foot off put the base amount on. But um, this works for me, and I think if I were to add a second screen, I may put that on the VESA arm so I could still reach under it. But you can see from these pictures, my desk is narrower than yours. I really don't have room comfortably for a second display. But um, yeah, uh, it's nice to have options. And, and as some real-time follow-up, the VESA arm you bought will hold 25 pounds, and the iMac Pro is 21 and a half. So you're good. You got, you got room to spare. I, I, as Sean Blanc would say, I have margin. <laughs> it's good. I was very nervous all of a sudden, wondering like, oh, what if what if the what if the limit's twenty pounds and you're over? But you're not. Kapunk. You're set. Then I'll add some. Then I'll add some dents to the top of my desk. Yeah, <laughs> and the bottom <laughs> of the iMac Pro, which is worse. <laughs> what you can't see in the photos very well is I have a couple of SSDs behind the iMac Pro. They're not under the desk. Now this may change now that I've spent twenty five dollars and gotten that fancy elevation pocket thing yeah the shelf yeah yeah uh those SSDs could go in there but i have um two of these they are i use the four terabyte samsung ssds like the um uh, the evo series I'm, t- I'm trying to find the, the model number it'll be in the show notes the uh the 860 evos i got them on i think 
Black Friday or something. I did not pay what they are currently listed for on Amazon, thankfully. Uh, that, uh, and that's kind of a, another thing too. When you're looking for something like this, you know, you can use you know you like there are a couple websites that you can like search Amazon pricing over time and when it may go on sale. SSDs are one of those things that if you can wait a little while, sometimes you can actually get a pretty good deal on some SSDs that uh, you know that end up on sale sometimes. But anyways, I have two of those. And the uh, the reason I went with uh, these is I wanted really fast external storage. I was using a Drobo before attached to my Mac Mini server across the network, and I I lost a drive in that, and then I replaced the drive and it rebuilt okay. But I don't know. I, I kind of like I kind of realized going through that process that I wanted something faster, and then these SSDs went on sale, and I have them. In, clo- in enclosures sold by Mac Cell. So the OWC Mercury Elite Pro Mini. And the reason I went with this case is that it is USB 3.1 Gen 2. And that means I get full 10 gigabit a second of throughput to and from the SSDs. And I got to tell you, moving big files to these drives, it is almost as fast as moving things around internally on the iMac Pro. They are crazy fast. I edit off of one of them for videos if I have like a really big Final Cut project and it it never lags. I've been really, really happy with these. So I have uh, each one uses a USB-C cable. So two of my Thunderbolt 3 ports just have USB-C cables in them going to these. They're bus powered. So there's no terrible power adapters, you know, dangling off the back of them. And I really just have them on the desk for quick access because when I when I first installed them, I, I thought maybe I could fit everything into one, but then end up with two, and I just haven't moved them. But again, that may change. So one of them is set up for archives, just old work that I, I need around, but I don't necessarily need uh, access to every day. And the other is just sort of a sort of a hodgepodge of stuff. So it's you know it's Mac OS X installers and just research for things, all sorts of junk that I don't necessarily need in Dropbox or on my other machines, but I don't, it's not really archived work either. The the line between these two drives is very thin. There's probably things on each drive that could just as well be on the other, but it works for me. And uh, I've been really happy with this, this edition, you know, that's uh, pretty recent uh, to my setup. Yeah, you you told me all about this, and I got super jealous. And and the power tip in there that Steven said was the OWC enclosure, because you can buy this expensive SSD, but if you put it in the wrong enclosure, the uh, bus speed, I guess you call it bus speed, but the transfer speed is is much slower. So you got to get the good enclosure if you want to get the benefit of this drive. Mm -hmm. And I had the same problem, even with the two terabyte internal, I've got a lot of media that I've been making and... uh, I occasionally butt into that. So I wanted some really fast as well. Uh, So I bought one as well. I bought a two terabyte one, got it on sale. And um, I did not get a self-enclosed one. Instead, I got just like, I took the Steven route. I bought the OWC enclosure. Mm -hmm. The challenge I faced with that was that the, I didn't really have a place for it because see, I've got, you know, my desk is empty below and I didn't really want to cable it all the way to the underside of the desk. That just felt weird to me. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know where to put it. And so I came up with a solution as I was doing the solution. I'm like, boy, if Stephen Hackett ever sees this, Oh no, he is going to hate this. So I want to show you, I'm going to send you via text message right now. A picture. We'll put it in the show notes. I am coming so clean right now. Let's see. I have not seen this. I have a, I have a suspicion of what you have done, but I want to see it. No, it's worse. Whatever you're thinking, it's worse. Oh no. Okay, let me describe <laughs> let me describe to the audience what I see. And again, I'll put it in the show notes. This OWC case is like brushed aluminum. It looks like an Apple product. It's beautiful. David Sparks, who is a monster, has just <laughs> an animal held it to the side of the vessel mount and, and gaff taped around it as if you're like taping someone's wrist together to kidnap them. Has just taped it to this arm. Oh, I mean, who are you? I gaff taped it to the visa mount arm. Wow. <laughs> and it's, it, I mean, gaff tape's really good. It's not going to go anywhere, but holy moly. Yeah, I know. It's terrible. It is so bad. But anyway, there it is. You'll see it. There it is. That's the worst. 
That is the worst. And this is behind the iMac, so it's yeah. just right there. Okay. I never see it, but I know it's there all at all times. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Wasn't expecting no words, to see right? that today. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I told you, whatever you're thinking, it's worse. I thought maybe you had like a little shelf. I figured it was behind the iMac. And I, some companies make little shelves you can attach to things. And I thought, oh, he just has it on a shelf back there. And that's nice. Yeah. No, no. You just taped it together like it's some sort of... Uh, it's like a hostage back yeah. there. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, the I mean, the other option is I could have taped it to the iMac. But I thought that would be that's you know, defiling two things, you know? Yeah. So. <laughs> So, so I put it back there, but whatever. There's no ventilation on the side, so I'm not covering any ventilation. Yeah, and the SSDs um, don't. I mean, they don't get that hot, and I mean, you're not hurting it by doing it. This you're just hurting me. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. All right, I'm putting down the show notes as David's surprise picture. All right, so people can go check that out. This episode of the Mac Power Users is brought to you by OmniFocus for the web. That's right, you heard it right. OmniFocus is on the web. This solves a whole bunch of problems for people. I just heard from a Mac Power Users listener recently who loves OmniFocus but happens to work in an office full of PC computers and no Macs and was having trouble managing his task list during the days. But with OmniFocus for Web, his problem is solved. So what does OmniFocus Web for, uh, for the Web get you? It's a OmniFocus that runs on most modern web browsers, and it gives you all the things you need. It gives you access to your inbox. It gives you access to your projects. You can go in and make changes with things. You can check things off. You can manage your tags. You can turn off and on flags. A bunch of the main features that you get with OmniFocus, but it's all right there in a web browser, and it's beautiful, and it's fast, and it just works great. So if you're in the situation where you like OmniFocus, but you don't have a Mac in front of you all day at your work, you're just fine. You can use OmniFocus for the web. It's a, it's a great new addition to the family of OmniFocus products. It's not really meant to be a sole product. This is an addition. I mean, if you're already using OmniFocus, this gives you access on the web. I don't think it's the the way you couldn't run OmniFocus alone on the web. I, I guess you could, but it's not really what they mean to do. And it's just awesome. I, I know they've been working very hard on it. They've spent a lot of time on this stuff, and, and now it's there for you. You can get a subscription as a web add-on. So if you're already an owner, you get the the web service on top of your your software, or you can get a cross-platform subscription where you get all the apps for your various devices and the web service. So they, they've got it no matter what you want. You head over to omnigroup.com, and it's right on the homepage. Get over and check out OmniFocus for the web. Super happy to see that this exists. I love hearing from the listeners that are being able to to finally use OmniFocus to get their work done because they have a web interface. And my congratulations to the Omni Group on shipping such a great new product. So uh, check it out at omnigroup.com and let them know you heard about it here on the Mac Power Users. So let's uh, let's talk about other office stuff. You know, the desk is the central hub for basically everybody. But if you have a home office or even a regular office, you know, you've got other stuff floating around. And you have two things that really interest me. You have a writing desk, and then you have what seems to be the nerdiest tool chest that's ever been assembled. Yeah. (laughs) Yes, I'm really happy. I, you know, we had this writing desk in our family. It's been passed down. I, it's definitely an antique. I don't know how old it is, but it's always been my whole life, a decoration. And as I was growing up the Sparks house, nobody ever really used it for what it was meant for. It's a, it's a drop front writing desk. Um, I don't know the exact, as a furniture guy, I should know what it's called. Uh, so I've heard some people call it a secretary desk, but I, I don't know if that's the appropriate, but I'll, I'll put a picture in the show notes. It's got a kind of a glass display case on top, but the main part of the desk is this drop leaf that pulls down and you can write on it, but it's got a few little cubbies to store your bills and, and whatnot in it. And growing up, I always admire that desk It's and, and it's found its way into my home now. And I am a fan, uh, uh, in addition to digital, I do some things analog and I like switching gears. And when I was setting up my home studio, I said, you know what? Uh, I don't have room for like a couch or I don't have room for like a comfy chair, but what I do have room for is a second desk. I want to be able to switch gears easily. And so I've got the digital desk that we've been talking about so far with the uh, crazy, you know, um, gaff tape. SSD drive in the back of it. But then <laughs> I, I've got this this writing desk and I love it. You know, the mail comes in, it gets processed there. 
I write my journal entry, entries over there. And, you know, there's, there's certain types of work I do at that desk. And uh, I just love it. There's not a whole lot of digital stuff in it. One thing I did do with that desk was I ran an anchor charger up the back and gaff taped that to the back. That's going to be a theme today. I feel like you've got the K-Base bell. I might need a gaff tape bell, at least for this episode. Um, but I gaff taped an anchor USB charger to the back and then very carefully drilled a hole in the, in the back. Um, if you look at the picture of the desk, there's like a, there's like a little like one inch space underneath the like letter storage stuff okay. that goes all the way to the back of the desk. This is awesome because you, a, a iMac, I'm sorry, an iPad pro or even a MacBook pro can slide underneath there perfectly. And so I drilled a hole, did a lot of measurements and got it right in the first go, but I drilled a, a hole and I ran a USB-C and a lightning cable through there. Nice. I can put stuff in there and charge on it. It's great. But, but I just love you. I, you know, it's like, just like this sit stand desk brings me joy. That desk also brings me joy. No, it's great. I, I think there's, it's, there's something valuable in a workspace to have area away from the computer, right? And, and, and that can be hard if you, you know, you're stuck in a tiny cubicle at work, but even most yeah. places, you know, most jobs, at least that I've been in, I've got, you know, a computer area and a non-computer area. And it's really nice to kind of sit down with paperwork or just to write or to do something away from the screen. I, I, I sort of have that. I have a second desk we'll talk about in a minute, but sometimes when I'm just doing paperwork. I'll just put the the iMac Pro to sleep and like get rid of the keyboard and trackpad, like shove them out of the way yeah. and have some area away from the screen. I find it so valuable. And that's another advantage of these monitor arms is you can push the stuff to the back of the desk very easily um, and have that space. But but I've got this writing desk and it's like I said, I that was uh, it's real fun and um, it's nice having. It's a, it's a nice looking piece of furniture, man. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it's like, it's so well done. It's got like secret compartments and like, as a furniture maker, I really appreciate it. There's a, a, a very ingenious hinging system. So when you open the drop leaf, it like s s arms slide out from the back, mm. you know, and so it's got nice support. You know, my family, a, a, half of my family is from Massachusetts, Rhode Island. So um, us West Coasters, we don't see furniture like this. I think East Coasters see it more often. And, and this desk came from Rhode Island, but the um, like out here, you'll see arts and crafts stuff and, and, you know, green and green stuff, but you won't see furniture. Like this is kind of federal style. And uh, I, so people on the East coast are used to seeing this all the time, but for me, it's like really something special. So let's talk about this, this toolbox of yours. This is amazing. This was an inspiration as I was setting up for having my home studio. You know, I had the app. I will, uh, I will look it up. I had a 3D modeling app because I've only got a 10 by 10 room here. I've got 100 square feet to work in, so I don't have a lot of room. Mm -hmm. And I kept modeling different things. Like I, uh, part of me really wanted like one of those like lounge chairs where you could push back and kick your feet up and sit on the iPad. But this, there was no way the math would ever work to put one of those in here without making it just completely in the way. Mm -hmm. um, but I did have some room, and I was. When I was working on construction for it, you know, planning the paint and, you know, like, you know, I was, I actually went and looked at the different like outlet covers. I mean, I'm, I'm anal. I thought, you know, this is finally my space. I'm going to make it the way I want it. Right. And I'm, and I'm walking to check out at Home Depot and they've got these roller toolboxes there. They're not, even, I think this was like a couple hundred bucks. It wasn't, it's not like the best one ever made in the world. It's Husky. You know, I don't know how, you know, whatever, but I got thinking, what if I put that? in the studio, you know, and, and I think part of the motivation was, um, I had watched recently with the kids, um, the, uh, the movie Kingsman. Okay. And Kingsman, depending on your point of view, it's, it's hilarious or it's a horrible movie. I'm not sure, <laughs> but the, uh, <laughs> it's very violent and uh, it's not usually my thing, but you know, you watch it with your kids, you have fun. And there's a scene in it where they've got this room with all these guns perfectly laid out. And I'm like, that's what I would like for all my tech gear, you know? <laughs> so, so I thought that was the idea is like, and I knew I didn't have much storage in this room. And also I wanted to shoot videos in the room. And so this toolbox just called out to me because it's got wheels on the bottom. So like if I want to shoot video of me standing behind a desk, I can just roll this to the center of the room and shoot over the top of it. And I've got a desk for video. But also I've got excellent storage in underneath with all this. You know, there are mechanic shelves on like double barrel 
Yeah, um, it's rollers. serious hardware, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, this isn't the best one you could buy, but it's serious enough for what I'm doing with it. And then one of the listeners sent me the uh, a link to Kaizen Foam, which is this foam you buy in these sheets, these uh, two by four sheets. And it's you can you can either use heat or you can just use an exacto knife to cut it out. But basically, you put it in your drawers and you cut out the slot for whatever you're putting in it. And I have loaded this thing with this Kaizen foam. So every I didn't put all the pictures on the website, but a bunch of the drawers are there, and everything just fits perfectly. So is that what you want to talk about next? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you've got a lot yeah. of stuff in here. We don't have to go through it all. I, I guess I'm most curious about what happens over time. So, like, one of these photos, you have a bunch of dongles here. Yeah. Like a bunch of lightning dongles. Right? You don't need lightning dongles anymore with your iPad. So, yeah, I know. what happens to this foam as, like, time moves on? Yeah, so it's interesting. If you buy Kaizen foam, I'll put a link to the uh, to the website. It's, like, it's not that expensive per sheet, but it is massively expensive to ship it. Unless you buy a hundred dollars worth of Kaizen foam, and then the shipping is free. Oh, so you have a you have a bunch of the stash somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I have I have like three full sheets of it left in the garage. So okay. like I I can replace some of these as I want. Uh, but yeah, like I I'm particularly proud of my cable drawer um, because everything I want is there, and I know exactly where it is. And like when I go on a trip, I just take the pieces that I need. And then when I come back, I know what's missing and I put them back. It's great. It's pretty cool. You can see in, in some of my photos, I have a a white Ikea piece of furniture. You know, I've got some storage cubes in it. Some are open. Then I got drawers and shelves in the bottom half. Yeah. And then next to it is this gray file cabinet, which weighs about as much as a car. It It nearly killed me and a friend to bring this out here. So I have stuff stashed away, but it is not nearly as nicely done as yours like you know one of those drawers is cables one of those drawers is microphones one's audio components you know i kind of know where things are and i feel like i'm pretty well organized in that but you've taken it to the next level yeah and then at the bottom there's these deep drawers and i found again at home depot they had these little plastic containers which the width of them is the exact height of the drawer. Oh, nice. So I bought a bunch of them. You can see that in one of these pictures. And I've got a couple of them that aren't even used yet, which is great. It's always nice having room in your storage for additional things. Yeah. But I've got like, you know, you can see everything's self-labeled. It's very easy to get to. I think whenever I find myself like running into hard problems and I want to um, find an excuse not to work, I think the the storage system is a is a great outlet for me to you know not get my work done. So sure. you can see the fruits of all that in these pictures. <laughs> yeah, this is great. And you're using you've got a label maker. Everything is labeled nicely. Even in this picture, it looks like a closet. You know, these shelves and everything are labeled. I, I have a comment though about this. Yes, I have two comments about the closet photo. Yeah, the closet. I'm sure I can think of. I think I know one, but go ahead. One, that's a lot of bags. Like, yes, I knew that was your first comment. Uh, one, yes. two. I mean, it's like eight <laughs> backpacks or shoulder slings in here. So yeah, I, I, know, I mean, I know. look, I've been through a lot of bags. That's a thing, a nerd thing. But there's a lot in here. Secondly, though, you have a. I guess these these slide out, and you can get stuff in and out of these little these little racks. You have one called computer gear, but R two D two is like in jail. In this, yeah, I know. What did he do wrong? So that that drawer usually is computer gear, but a lot of that has moved into the to, to the tool chest. He, he's he's next to an external hard drive. It looks like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I that 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 section is right now to me. There's some stuff in there that needs work. You know what okay. I mean? It's like it's not not permanent. But yeah, the bag thing is like I have. It's hard for me to get rid of them. I used to make fun of my wife for buying too many purses. And then once I put all this together and kind of laid it bare, I'm like, oh, yeah, I can't complain anymore. Uh, but, yeah, I do have quite a few bags. And it's like some of them are for, like, legal. They're fancy for going to court and stuff. And some of them are for taking trips. And mm -hmm. yeah, I, I have too many bags. That is certainly true. That's okay. Maybe at some point we'll do a what's in our bag episode, but yeah, uh, I, I rotate backpacks a lot. I think I finally found the one, but time will tell. And then I also have what I call the upstairs downstairs bag. Um, that's the one to the far right with a buckle on it. So when I want to leave the room and go work somewhere else, it's, you know, the iPad, the journal, whatever goes in that and I can take it with me. It's like a bag made exclusively for moving around the house. <laughs> that's great. 
<laughs> and then, of course, I just for giggles, I put my saxophones in there because why? Why wouldn't you? You've got them. You might as well have them yeah. all together and in a photo. All right, I want to talk about your your other stuff. Oh, actually, one last thing. Um, okay, you talked about how heavy it was to get that cabinet into mm-hmm. your office. My office is on the second floor, and this tool chest. Oh no! Get, I mean, I got the wheels off. I did a whole thing. I had like, you know, I had like family members over. I got a nephew who's a water polo player. I had to buy pizzas. It was like it was an event, and I was just telling Daisy after it's in. I said, you know. If we ever move, we're going to sell the house with the tool chest. Yeah. I'm say, you get the tool chest. <laughs> yeah. It, it is nice to have m- like a movable platform for video stuff. So it's not any of my photos because the way I have it stored, you can't really see it. But I have a fold out table. If anyone's seen my YouTube channel, you'll be familiar. It's like a really banged up surface. Yeah. Uh, I tried replacing it with actually a Husky branded movable workbench. And that ended up being too big to keep in the studio. So it's in the garage. But there are occasions where I roll it out here if I need a bigger work surface. Um, so I think you've done a good job like combining that with storage. That makes a lot of sense. Now, that's fancy, right? I've got a workbench in my office. But gang, Stephen Hackett has a Mac Museum in his studio. It is true. There's uh, Those pictures are there for everyone to see. Also, just for kicks, I'll put a link to the Apple Collection inventory page which I actually updated last night because I realized there was so much stuff that wasn't on it. I'm not sure it's 100% accurate, but uh, I've got a lot of computers in here, and most of them are on this big rack. So this rack sits next to my desk, and there's a little like partition wall in between them that you can see in one of the shots. I keep uh, every lanyard from any conference or event I go to, and those lanyards hang there. So the the, the I can't see the collection from my desk. It's sort of next to me, but there's a wall in the way. Uh, this shelf I bought from Lowe's. And Lowe's and Home Depot, obviously, great places to go with a home office. Yeah. This shelf, if I remember correctly, will hold one ton of weight per, per shelf. It is bolted into the slab of this building. It's not going anywhere. I had to assemble it in the in the room. It was too it's too big to go through the doorway. Yeah. And as you can see kind of from some of the pictures, the ceiling in here slants. One side of the studio is taller than the other, so like rain falls off of it. And it's very tight there at the top. And I've got some huge light strips in there to light those shelves up. So they're white in this picture. When I when I record a show, I have a home kit scene that dims the desk lights down and turns the huge strip lighting orange. Just as like in recording modes, so it kind of looks like I'm in a submarine. Yeah, I used to do it red, but I've always felt stressed out when I was done recording, and I realized that the red <laughs> color was like very intense. All right, I want to see how I do. I, I'm not looking at your description page, but I'm just looking at a couple of Macs I want to point out, see how I'm doing. Okay, the is that an X serve on the right side? Uh, it is an X serve RAID. So it's yes. the, 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 the I have some X serves that are not on display because they're enormous. Yeah, and then you've got you've got a cube in there. If you didn't have a cube, it's not a collection. That's true. Like, um, is that a 20th anniversary Mac with the with mm-hmm. the ears on the side? Yep, 20th there, anniversary Mac. You've got the you got the orange iMac. What was the name of that color again? When Tan- sold tangerine. It? Tangerine. Yeah, tangerine. And then like um, you have a is is that an original Mac? Yep. On the bottom and a Mac Plus on top, is that right? Uh, that? I think I think so. Maybe the other way. Looks around. slightly I elongated. I don't know, but anyway, yeah. Do they all boot up? Uh, a lot of stuff does. Some things I, I don't know from memory. I know, like I did the that that macOS screenshot project a couple years ago. That was done on all the Power Macs on the bottom row. Yeah. So yeah. all of them run the Macintosh TV, which skipped over the black one. On the second shelf, that does yeah, not Mac- that does not boot. I know what's wrong with it, but parts are just impossible. Uh, but most everything is in at least decent decent shape. The Macintosh TV was supposed to be the dorm room Mac, but it was super expensive. I remember when that came out. And a terrible computer and a terrible television all at once. Yeah. And then is that a next cube on the top left? It is. That used oh my to gosh. that used to belong to um Paul who writes Tweetbot, and uh now it belongs to me. Nice. Nice. You shipped it to me. Well, the the last question I have, and I, I just gang, just go look at these pictures. It's crazy. But you've got these massive stacks of laptops. It looks like you've even got the battleship. Is that the seventeen inch one on the bottom there? Oh yeah. And this, uh, I should say too, there's some discrepancy between the photos. Uh, right now, the shelving is actually kind of it's not taken apart, but I've got a lot of machines off of it because I've been rearranging a little bit. But you'll see, like, oh, the, there's a bunch of 
iPod minis on the shelf, but then they're also in another picture somewhere else. Like I've moved stuff around a little bit. The laptop library is what I call that top section. And so it's a bunch of power books and there's a bunch of iBooks and other stuff up there too. Um, they're not super accessible. I got to get a ladder out to get those, but they're all uh, stacked up there, kind of ready to go. And on top, is that the 12 inch? Um, yep. 12 inch yeah. power book, adorable yeah. little laptop. Now, uh, do you worry about the weight of that? Like the 17 is under four laptops. Is that a problem? Yeah, I mean, I haven't had a problem yet. So I, I will say the the back ones with the iBooks and stuff where they're heavier, I don't stack as highly. And I think, actually, I think now if I were to roll over there and look, I, they're not stacked as high as they are in this photo. Like I said, I've, I've rearranged this a little bit, but uh, it wasn't like pristine for a photo for the show notes. So this is this photo of the shelves is from last year. Yeah. The other thing you have in your office that I think is really interesting is you've got a overhead photo rig. I do. I'll put a link in the show notes to a YouTube channel where I explain this because it's really hard to talk through without seeing it. But it is basically an IKEA desk that I built a rig on so I can shoot, I can mount a camera and shoot straight down. So if you've ever seen any of my YouTube videos or photos where it looks like I'm, I'm, you know, directly above a product. I am. The camera is mount, mounts to this thing. It's all built out of wood, and my dad and I built it last year. And it's been a real game changer because shooting straight above something is actually really difficult. You, you almost have to have some sort of, you know, crazy tripod system or C-clamps and sandbags and stuff. And I had all that, but it took a long time to set up. And I wanted a situation where I could very quickly execute if I had an idea. So it takes just a couple of minutes to set this up. If you watch that YouTube video, you can see me do it. And it's uh, it's been really great. I'm really happy with it. And the best part is it's still a functioning desk because those legs, the stainless steel pipe is just at the very edges. So you can work over there and not really be bothered with the overhead part because it's way above you. Yeah, I, I'm, I've been dealing with that problem too. My, my solution for the longest time was this very precarious tripod thing where i tilted it and then hi- it hung weight on the end to like yes. counterbalance yeah and it's like this camera is too expensive for me to be doing this mm-hmm. and i uh i got on like one of the amazon sales i got a dgi light a light dgi camera that's pretty good that i can stick on a clamp and um i think that'll be my overhead photography rig yeah not nearly as nice as yours and i'm sure you've got really good lighting as well yeah, I do. Uh, that We talked about that in a recent episode. I've got a ring light that I use. And yeah, that's oh, why yeah, that's it's, right. Uh, it's been really good. I have a screen in the window so I can see because obviously I can't see the viewfinder of the camera. Check out the video because I, I walk through the logistics of it. It's all adjustable. I've been really happy with it. Well, while we're at this point, um, we, we talked through the offices. Let's just take a minute to talk about the, the toys because both of us have uh, <laughs> our grown men... <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, there seems to be a lot of extraneous stuff in these offices and studios. This episode of the Mac Power Users is brought to you by Squarespace. Make your next move with Squarespace. It lets you easily create a website for your next idea or project with a unique domain name, an award-winning selection of templates, and much more. Maybe you need to create an online store, or maybe you want to have a portfolio to show off your work, or maybe you want to become a blogger or a podcaster. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that handles all of that stuff. And the best part is you don't have to become some sort of system administrator. There's nothing to install. There's no patches to worry about. No upgrades are needed. Squarespace has got it covered. They have award-winning 24-7 customer support. If you need any help, they allow you to quickly and easily grab a unique domain name. And all of those award-winning templates are beautifully designed for you to show off your great ideas. I've used Squarespace for a whole bunch of projects over the years. But as we're recording this, uh, just this morning, I had a blog post I needed to publish on the Relay blog. I just went to it in my browser. I could drag images in. I, I wrote in Markdown right in the browser, saved it all. And it looks great. All those photos do the right thing on desktop and iPad and mobile. The the, uh, the template handles all of that stuff for me. So I don't have to worry that it's going to be weird for some of my readers. Squarespace plans start at just $12 a month, but you can start a trial with no credit card required by going to squarespace.com slash MPU. And when you decide to sign up, use the offer code MPU to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain and to show your support for Mac Power users. Once again, that's squarespace.com slash MPU and the code MPU to get 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace, make your next move. Make your next website. 
All right, let's talk about these toys. You've got, I, I see a few things in your office. There seems to be a space theme going on. There's definitely a space. I would say there's a crossover space Lego theme in my office. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I got the space podcast. Uh, it's always been an interest of mine. So I have, you know, I've got a Lego space shuttle. I've got the Lego Saturn V, which I built la- last year or the year before. There's one photo of a Lego robot and a Lego car. It's on the, the left side of my desk under a lamp. And those are like two things I built as a kid. And, you know, like my mom finally called me one day and said, you have to get your toys out of my attic. And I went over there and got it. And now my, my kids destroyed everything else I built. But those two were special. So I fished those out and have those uh, safe and sound in my office. Okay, you know, I built them with my brothers. I was a kid. They a lot of sentimental value yeah. to a lot of this stuff. And uh, so they hang out on my desk now. And you have a lava lamp. I don't understand that at all. It, I think I had it as a kid. I don't know. I've always had it. Like it was in my room as a kid. It went to college with me in my dorm room. It is, I don't know the last time I turned it on, but it's, it's there too. I see you have an Apple HomePod. <laughs> I've got a HomePod on the shelf. Does it get a lot of use in the office? I mean, if I'm... Shooting a video and I'm doing B-roll, I'll just I'll like stream a podcast or listen to music on it, uh, but it doesn't get a ton of use. And then above that are a couple of shelves with like my completed field notes collection and some again some sort of various uh, odds and ends, you know, things from past jobs or from you know. Yeah, there's a picture of Tim Cook saying in front of the connected logo, <laughs> a bunch of fun stuff. Yeah, I've got I've got a HomePod as well in here, and it's, I use it all the time. I mean, it's playing all the time. I I even occasionally make phone calls on it because it's actually a pretty good speakerphone when you connect it to your to your iPhone. But I like having that. Um, my my toy collection is a sickness. I guess that's the only way to put it. So years ago, somebody turned me on to the sideshow toys, which is like a place nobody that is a fan of something should ever go. And uh, I have all these friends who collect Star Wars stuff and they're like, they're all like completionists. You know what I mean? Like they want to have all of the three and a half inch figures. They want to have all the six inch figures. I don't have, that's just not my personality. And the idea of storing things like that just makes me crazy. Like I don't like to keep a lot of stuff. So rather than buy a bunch of $10 things, I buy like one, like $300 thing every year or two. And, and I've got, I'm at capacity now. <laughs> I don't have any room for it anymore. I got Yoda. I got Chewy. I got Luke. I got Ray. I'm good. This website is amazing. Yeah, I know. It's it's crazy. No matter what you're into, you should. Dude, ch- they have the a, a replica of member in Jurassic Park when the guy was like stealing the embryos and had them hidden in a shaving cream can. Yeah. You can buy one. Yeah, that's what they do there. I mean, everything. This is amazing. No matter what your fandom is, they've got it there. It's, it is completely nuts. And, um, and I, you know, I, I skewed Star Wars, so I've got this stuff in here. It's always a little weird. You know, sometimes I'll do like video calls with clients. And I got the stuff in the background. I'm like, mm-hmm. is that a good idea? And then I'm like, you know what? I'm doing okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. If they don't like it, may, maybe it's a good way to test if it's a good fit or not. I don't there you know. go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I, I've got those. I, I but I am kind of at capacity right now. So, but it, it is nice. They make me happy. I look at them. Mm-hmm. I smile. I move on. Uh, another thing in my office that we didn't mention, but it, a lot of people asked about it when I posted my gear on my website is I've just got a simple clock on top of my desk uh, on Amazon. It was like fifteen bucks, and I'll I'll find a link. But it's it's kind of wood, but it's it's black. It's you know it's it's, it's fake wood or whatever, but. You know, I've got a clock on the on the the iMac, but it's not always turned on. It's just nice having a clock in the room. Yeah, I have one. It's called the Lemetric Time. I think you have one too. Yeah. It's on yeah, the the shelf behind me. Yeah, the, the, we we actually put that downstairs by the TV. But yeah, we have one of those too. People always ask me when they see it in videos, like, "Oh, it rotated around. What is it doing?" So, is there anything you feel like um, like any missing pieces? Is like something like I've got a couple that I you know like some things I'd like to add or change. Or do you feel like you're in a pretty good spot with your home office there. Um, I am always kind of trying to keep it minimal to the extent possible. Um, uh, I do need some better storage in here. Like, like I, like for instance, what you don't see, I took out of the room before I took the pictures is I've got like four corporate books in my office right now that I'm working on. And it's like, I don't really have a temporary place for those. I have a bookshelf, but it's kind of turned into a knickknack bookshelf more than a bookshelf. 
So I, I I'm still kind of struggling with that. I need to like I've got different storage in the house for like I represent a lot of companies. I've got a lot of corporate books, so I've got I've got to figure that out. So storage is always a question for me. It's a it's a very small room at ten by ten, um, and I'm I really don't like moving things to get to things. Does that make sense? Sure. So, so I'm really trying to keep it real functional, and so that's that's a big challenge for me. Yeah, I feel the same way a little bit. I've got stuff sort of stashed a lot of places. I would like, um, you know, with the, the Ikea thing behind me, you know, some of those are bookcases, some of drawers. I like that approach that I have different types of storage. Basically, everything in my studio is just around the outside edges. I leave the open, the middle floor open. I would like more desk space, like a return where I had, like, you know, some side desk area, but there's just really, really no way to, to do that, especially because I do video in here for sometimes. I need the depth, you know, so I can be away from the camera and have depth of field and, be able to, to drag things around. So really what I'm saying is I wish for like twice the square footage. Yeah. But every time I joke about expanding this building, which is a standalone building behind my garage, for those uh, listeners who may not know that, this is a, a freestanding building on, on my property. When I joke about like doubling the size into the backyard, um, somebody I'm married to, I won't say who, uh, isn't a fan of that idea. So I'm, I'm stuck with my 200 square feet forever, I think. Yeah, me, I think I am too. I live in a track home. I don't even think I could build something in the backyard if I wanted. And with the California heat, it would be misery unless you really did it right. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I think this is probably where I'm at. If money were no issue and there was nothing to worry about, ideally I would have like, I don't know, about a, a thousand square foot A-frame, you know, with like <laughs> dedicated areas for video versus work versus legal. I, you know, I mean, something like that would be ideal for me, but you know, it's, I don't think that's in the cards. Yeah. What about stuff that's gone wrong? Like for me, one of the things I did when I set this up is I bought a whiteboard. And in fact, I don't know if you look close enough at the pictures of the desk, there's a blank space to the left of it where I had hung the whiteboard. Now there's some holes there. I got a patch and paint. Uh, eventually I moved it over to the back of the door. Yeah, I see that. Uh, um, I don't use it. You know, it just sits there and collects dust. I thought it would be great to have a whiteboard to stand up and, you know, think, you know, out of the box, blah, blah, blah. But I do that with a piece of paper and a pen, or I do that on my computer with my note. And I realize mm -hmm. that was just a wasted purchase. I don't think, I think at some point that's going to leave because it's just mm -hmm. sitting there. And it mocks me now. It's like, hey, you thought you'd be all hippie and use this, and you didn't. So I don't know. I'm I'm probably going to give that to one of my kids or just get rid of it. Anything like that for you that just didn't work out? I mean, this studio has definitely been through several revisions. The desk and the collection, they are where they will always be because I built this temporary wall. Or not temporary wall, but a partial wall between them. Like, that is fixed width. But the opposite side, where the overhead rig and the that wide Ikea pieces that has changed several times uh for that second desk wasn't in here the first year and then Mike was coming up my business partner was coming to the U.S. for a week and he was going to work out of the office and I sort of bought it just to have more workspace and then it evolved so I've definitely changed things over time I don't know if I've had any major you know setbacks one thing I, I wish I had done because this was a concrete block building we gutted everything out of it we put these you know, these are dry, sheetrock drywall walls yeah. now yeah and you know we put studs in and lots of insulation double drywall on the end towards the house uh because the air conditioning unit for the house is right outside this window trying to deaden that sound i redid all the power so i have outlets everywhere i want them the electrician thought i was crazy because i have outlets everywhere yeah but one thing i wish i had done is i only have one ethernet drop so this is hardwired ethernet to the house and it just comes in one place under my desk. And I wish I had, well, there were, there's no drywall up, you know, maybe even just with like put a switch in and have a drop on the other side where the overhead rig is now. Cause there are many times where I'm working on that desk and I need ethernet. Like uh, when I did the, the screenshot thing, again, I used a bunch of old power max and those need ethernet. And I, I was just pulling the photos off of them over the network. And I ran a, just basically a really long Ethernet cable across the floor. And that's fine because I'm the only one out here. Like, my family doesn't come out here. I don't hang out out here. It's just for work. So it wasn't a, a big deal, but it was kind of a pain. So I wish I had thought a little bit more about the networking side of it. But all in all, it's a pretty minor 
misstep in what has really been an amazing space for me over the last three years. I hope I can work in here until I retire. It's it's really been so good otherwise. Yeah, I had when I set this up, I ran Ethernet up the wall from downstairs from the closet. So I have a hard wire to the internet in here. I and I ran two of them for the same reason. And so right now I just have one connected to an Eero in the room. So the Eero blasting in this room is is wired up to the box. And then the other one's plugged directly into the iMac. And I figured that that wasn't a bad idea. Mm-hmm. With a 10 by 10 room, I don't need to put it on either side, though. It's it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Um, one of the challenges I had when I first started using it, in fact, if you listen to some of the MPU episodes as I was going through the construction, is it, the room was a little boomy. I bought some some decorative wall foam off um, off Amazon again. And they're, they're like fabric-covered foam. And mm-hmm. I put them up on the walls. You can see them. They're hanging all over the place. It's a little sad. I wanted to put up some of the artwork. Daisy and I have collected some nice artwork, uh, Disney artwork over the years, but um, the room immediately got quieter when I did that. And that's the reason why I can record the show without having to take extraordinary measures every week. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I did it. Yeah, I've had, as you can see from the photos, I have a lot of foam in here. I had the same problem. This building was just a box and the booming was really bad. In fact, if you go back on my YouTube channel to an earlier studio tour, I actually used to have a, it was made out of fabric, but like basically a shower curtain that came behind my desk to really isolate just this side. And as I've added more furniture and more stuff in here, it's gotten better. I have some links in the show notes. I use Soundtracks uh, Studio Acoustic Foam. That is the big panels, like around the desk and on the far wall. And then I use some stuff I found on Amazon uh, the RLX acoustic sound foam on the ceiling. And I chose that because it's really lightweight. And I, s- sound foam is tricky. A lot of the stuff, at least the, the brands I've used, come with like these little like kind of double sticky tape to hang them. And I had pretty bad luck with that. And so I actually just used nails. And so some of these photos you can see like shiny objects, like that's not something wrong with my camera, like there's nail heads coming through this foam. You use, use a wide enough nail head, it'll, it'll grab the foam. And I mean, if I ever like really renovate in here, I'd have a lot of sheetrock work to do, but it's not, honestly not a big deal. In fact, some of these photos, you can see patches and stuff where I've moved things around over time and needed to patch some <laughs> sheetrock in places. Yeah. And it's it's really been, um, uh, been very good for me. And, and I have most of my acoustic stuff taken care of. Um, when I shoot my video, if I'm, if I'm standing in the wrong place in the room, I get a little bit of echo, but you can only do so much before it feels like you're in a cave. So I feel like I've ended up with a happy balance. What about the, um, the lighting? So my, my overhead lighting is just two LED fixtures. They are daylight temperature. So light has different color temperatures. Daylight is in a vacuum is very harsh. Like it's kind of bluish light, Yeah. but I went with that because I can match it to any other lighting. So like that ring light I have or the 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 lights I use for my YouTube videos, it's all day I can make it all daylight temperature so I don't have any clashes. And um they're not smart lights, they're like wired to a light switch. I did do there's two of them end to end and they are on separate light switches so I can light kind of either half of the room independently if you will. It's fine, you know, just overhead lights. A lot of times I don't use them and just use I have IKEA lamps with hue light, just white hue light bulbs that dimmable uh, on either side of my desk. A lot of times I just use those turn, turn down pretty low and kind of work in a dark environment. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to get into the whole video lighting thing. Cause that that's a whole nother discussion. We kind of covered it in the last feedback show anyway, but the, um, but I like you, I, I put, um, I installed ceiling lights, but they're led. So they're very low profile. Cause we didn't have a lot of room above the ceiling in this house, the way that this room is set up. So, but those LEDs, uh, they're way, way thinner than can lights, you know, where can lights are measured in feet. These are measured in inches, but they, I got blue. It's funny. We didn't, we never talked about this, but we both got the same temperature lights uh, for the exact same reason. The other thing I did is I, I wired into the ceiling, a separate circuit. My grandfather's an electrician. I got a little experience. I wired a separate circuit and put a strip a power strip in the ceiling, but it's just a power strip up there and it's on a switch on the wall. And like when I'm doing video stuff, if I want to plug in from the ceiling, I can. That's cool. Yeah, that's, that's handy. You can see in some of my photos, I have surge protectors, like one on the wall next to the 
overhead rig because you, you need power places and I don't want that sort of on the floor. So I, yeah. I screwed that into the wall and um, it's helpful. This episode of the Mac Power Users is brought to you by Linode. High performance SSD Linux servers for all of your infrastructure needs. Get a $20 credit with the link in the show notes. With Linode, you can instantly deploy and manage an SSD server in the Linode cloud, and you can get a server running in just seconds with just your choice of Linux distro, resources, and node locations. Linode has hundreds of thousands of customers, and if you're looking for a remote server, that's a good thing. They're all looked over by their incredible 24-7 support team. If you ever run into any problems, you just drop them an email, give them a call, or chat with them over IRC at the Linode community, and it's that easy. So whatever suits you best, they've got you covered with support, and they have some super useful guides and support documentation, so if you just need to quickly look something up, you can. Their management panel's been updated, and it's now in beta at cloud.linode.com. The new management console is a single-page application build using the cutting-edge React.js stack and is backed entirely by their public API, and it's open source. Plus, they feature two-factor authentication to keep you and all your data safe and secure. Like, if you want to put a Linux box in the cloud, you use Linode. I mean, that's what everybody does. I mean, it's a very popular solution for people that are running applications or just want to have their own data storage or cloud services running in the background. They've got great prices and they back up what they sell. Tons of support. And right now they're hiring. So if you want to learn more, you can check out what they're looking for. Just go to linode.com careers. Linode has pricing options to suit everyone. Their plans start at one gigabyte of RAM for just $5 a month. And they're offering a high memory plan starting at 16 gigabytes of RAM. And Linode has a special offer for you. As a listener to the show, you can go to linode.com slash MPU and use promo code MPU2019 with no space to get $20 off any Linode plan. If you go in for the basic plan, that means you get four months for free. One gigabyte of RAM, on that plan. And with a seven day money back guarantee, you've got nothing to lose. Give Linode a try today. That's linode.com slash MPU and promo code MPU2019 to learn more. Sign up and make the most of that $20 credit. Our thanks to Linode for their support of this show and all of Relay FM. I'm curious how this is gonna, gonna go because our situations on the surface seem very similar, right? We do similar work. Well, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, but I mean, your content work and my content work are pretty similar and we have actually pretty similar setups, but you're working in your home, but your kids are older. I'm working near my home, you know, sort of uh, Mark Twain out in his, out in his writing uh, office, uh, but I got young kids who, one of whom is home all the time and other people, you know, may have a spouse that also works at home or roommates or it's all over the map. So I'm curious what did you find difficult about making the transition to working from home? And if you could tell somebody who is uh, thinking about it or who is getting ready to start it, if you could give them uh, a piece of advice, what would it be? Well, it's funny because you mentioned Mark Twain. He had a writing like house on his property and he would have his family. They had to blow a horn if they wanted to talk to him. So he was able to find isolation, even though he was working from home. And I think that's a big piece of it. You know, it's like, how do you find that? When I first started working from home, my wife and I talked about it because at the time she was home quite often. And we just both agreed there's no like expectations. Like if, if I'm going to do a hike and she wants to come along, she can, if she can't, she can't. We agreed that we don't expect to eat lunch together every day, Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, And, um, and just kind of give yourself space uh, with my kids being older in the teenage years, they actually are very good about, you know, giving you quiet when you need it. Like when I'm recording a show, they don't, you know, they don't blast music and whatnot. I think the challenges would be much harder with younger children. Uh, but for me, the transition has been really easy. I am, and, and part of it is just, I put on a tie and went into an office every day for 22 years. So there's a little bit of a uh, post-traumatic stress, you know, involved <laughs> where I just, I just really want to work home and, and it's, it's, a, it's given me freedom to reset defaults. I mean, now we're kind of straining into the stuff we talk about in focus, but, but I'm able to just get up and get like two hours of work done before I do anything every day 
because it's in my home. Whereas when I had to go to an office, there was, you know, the getting showered, the driving through traffic, and then all the office chit chat that happens when you get there, where it'd be like three hours between the time I wake up and I'm actually doing substantive work. Now it's more like 15 minutes. So that's huge. Um, and it's not for everyone because I do think it does require a lot of self-discipline because when you're at home, it would be really easy to say, well, now I'm going to go watch Netflix or I'm going to you know, go do something. I'm actually, it's just for whatever reason, I'm pretty self-disciplined about this stuff. And, you know, using the time blocking and all the stuff I talk about on Focus, I, I spend a full day working here. I mean, when, when the family gets home in the evening and it's dinner time, I kind of leave the office and I try not to do a whole lot of work in other parts of the house. Yeah. So, so are you treating it as sort of a, a separate location, even though it's just down the hall? It sort of removed somehow from the rest of the house. Yeah, yeah. I I love having it as a workspace, but I also love leaving it at the end of the day. That's definitely how I treat mine. I have the benefit of having to walk across the backyard, so there is some physical separation. But this is my workplace. I don't hang out out here. You know, sometimes my wife will have you know some some women over for dinner or you know a Bible study or something after dinner. And if I have work to do, I'll come out here. But if I'm just going to watch TV or I'm going to read a book. I'm going to go to our room and shut the door. I'm not going to do those things out here. This is a place for work to happen, not for hanging out. And the couple of times I've broken that rule, it feels really weird. Uh, so I like that it is it is separate. Uh, a large part of that is honestly the desktop setup. You know, when I started, I was a MacBook Pro and external display kind of user. And then I bought my 5K iMac about the time I opened this studio because I knew that I wanted to have a computer that all my work was on, that when I locked the door, it was uh, separated from me. Now, I still have a laptop, and I, I can work on it, but I, I don't bring it in the house very often. In fact, most of the time, the MacBook Pro is just sitting on the file cabinet, and I use it when I travel. But I don't want to bring work into the house unless I absolutely have to. And that has been really key for me. I, I didn't do that well in the beginning. And, and like like when you started out... My first home office was just a desk in my bedroom. And so work was the last thing I saw when I shut my eyes and the first thing I saw when I opened them the next morning. And it was very easy just to slip back there in the evenings after putting the kids to bed. And when we moved into this house and this building was available to me, I knew immediately that I had to do this. And it's been really beneficial for the family, beneficial for me. And I think no matter what your situation is, even if you just work remotely for a company, even if you just do that sometimes... Having a space for work, even if it's just, hey, when I'm when I'm going to work from home, I'm going to work from home at the kitchen table, or I'm going to work at home from the breakfast nook or whatever it is, having that zone, I think for a lot of people is really healthy because it, it, it puts you into these different modes. Okay, I'm here. It's during the workday. My laptop is here. I'm going to do some work. And if I just sit down on the couch with my MacBook Pro, I may start to get some work done, but then very soon I'm going to wander off into something else because... I'm on the couch. My brain knows that that's sort of relaxation time. Yeah. You know, I worked out of the corner of the bedroom for years when I was at the firm and doing Max Sparky on the side. And then when I left the firm, um, I still worked out of the corner of the bedroom for a couple of years. And uh, I can say the improvement in productivity and just general happiness when I got out of the bedroom is, is measured. And I, I don't think I will ever go back there. If, if for whatever reason, both of my kids ended up moving back home, you know, for whatever life throws at them and they need to move home for a while, I will go find space and rent it somewhere. I'm not going back to the bedroom. You know? That's what I was, that's what I was going to ask you if you had considered either co-working or just like I would, you are, you probably the same way you'd have to rent an office cause you record audio. Yeah. So your kids coming home could trigger that, but do you have you ever thought about that from like a benefit perspective? Like, wow, if I did that, I could get more work done, or you know, be more separated, or the idea does not really interest you. No, I really like working from home. I just I love it. I I like that um, when I finish a big block of work, I can I can get up, stretch my legs, go down to the kitchen, you know, make a sandwich, go out in the yard, pull some weeds. I I like I have I pick up a saxophone and start playing it. I can't do that in an office, you know. So. Um, I, after I've worked with in offices long enough for one lifetime, and if I don't have to do that again, that'll be great. If I have to do it again, I will, you know, but yeah, but I'll be looking very carefully as to what kind of space I put myself into. I'm mm -hmm. not going to just, 
you know, do the, the old thing again. And, and I actually have an office, which is kind of weird. I, I have s- space available to me to do fancy meetings when I put on a tie and want to do a, a board of directors meeting with a client or something. I don't actually have an office, but I have a conference room and I have an office that I can rent if I need it. But mm-hmm. uh, the, no, I've, I've used the conference room plenty, but actually renting an office has been very rare in, since I've left. And it's just fine how it is, but but I cannot go back into the bedroom. It, it, you know, it was it was the right solution at the time. It's what we could afford and what we had available to us. California, all our houses are small. You know, I was just in Illinois. Everybody's got mansions out there compared to what we have <laughs> in California. But you know, we're a house with three bedrooms and four people at one time were living it. Now we only got three people living it. But if it, if one of my kids came home, I would not make them sleep on you know a mattress in my office i would just turn this back into a bedroom for them of course and and then i would i would find space somewhere you know it would be worth it to me so uh but yeah it's it's been a good journey but i i really am happy with this and i i honestly don't think it's going to happen where i'm going to need to move out of it i i think both of my kids hopefully are going to find what they need and and move on with their lives you know, if I do, I will. But it's just, it's great having your own space. You know, thinking about that, I was thinking about, you know, what sort of tech do I use to to keep those things separate? And I don't know if I have any good examples there, because so much of it is just, you just have to make your mind up. That's what you're going to do. But a simple thing for me is, if something comes up or comes to mind after hours, or very often this will happen in Slack, someone will Slack me and they need something. And Doing that would require going to the office. In Slack, you can just say, hey, remind me of this in the morning. And then at 9 a.m., Slackbot would tell you, hey, check out this message. Or they're very often, yeah. if that happens, I'll just make, I'll put something into Todoist for the next morning, first thing, so I don't have to come. Part of that is convenience. I don't want to come back out here, which is, you know, it's not that far. But I lock it. I have, you know, security system. I got to do, do, deal with all that to come back out here. But the idea is like, hey, I can just quickly leave you know, morning Steven, something to do, and he'll do it first thing in the morning. And then I get to keep my evening as uninterrupted as possible. Because when you when you have a nine to five, all jobs are different. Some jobs you can't take home, other jobs it's easier to. But when you work at home, you really have to be stringent about those boundaries. And, you know, some of those little things of just like, this email can wait in the morning or not bringing my laptop in so I can't do any, get get real involved in anything makes a big difference. There's a feature in Basecamp that's like off hours where it just tells everybody, hey, I'm off hours right now. I'm not going to be available. And I, I think that's a, a very healthy way to look at it. One of the things I do is I wanted to get like an on-air light. That was my original idea to stick outside the office as I was opening the walls to put all these lighting in. And they're, what I found was that they're super expensive. I mean, it's like $300 for one of those on-air lights. Gee, that's crazy. <laughs> but instead on Amazon, once again, um, they have these like, they're water lights. I think they're made for like swimming pools, but they're little self-contained LED lights that, that come with a remote control where you can change the color. And I just double-sided taped one to the outside of the door of my office. And when I record, I've got a remote in my I, in my uh, in my husky cabinet here, I open it up, I press the red button, and then the red light goes on on the outside of the door. So people walking by outside know, hey, he's recording, I can't go in. Um, I don't know if I even really need it, because just in general, I keep the door open unless I can't have interruptions, and then I shut it. So they know if the door's shut, they probably can't come in, but it's kind of nice having a little red light on. Yeah, that's cool. It makes you feel like, well, it's like my orange lights on the shelf, They're like, yeah. now is the time I do this. Um, yes. Yeah, I don't have anything like that. I mean, I kind of remind the family that, hey, I'm going to record. Please don't let the dog out. You know, kids play in the front yard as opposed to the backyard. Well, you told you told me something in, in Illinois that kind of shocked me. You lock yourself in when you go in. I do lock myself in. I don't – it's just become habit. Part of it is so no one can barge in. Part of it is if someone were coming to like, I don't know, rob the Mac Museum, I would never know they were coming. <laughs> so uh, – yeah. Not that I am actually worried about that. I'm not. But uh, part of it is just like some of my four-year-old can't come streaming in if I am working yeah, on something. Sure, sure. Um, I do have a storm door on the outside, so I can leave the door door open and still see out, and that has a window in it so I can open the window. So when it's nice out in the spring and fall, I do that. And like if the kids are playing in the backyard, I can keep an ear on them. So I can make it you know, permeable to the outside. But like right now when I'm recording, it's 
dark and quiet and sort of a cave. Well, it sounds like you like it. It's a beautiful studio, and I can tell that a lot of love went into making it. It's it's been it's been great, and you know if you are working from home out of your spare bedroom, you can you don't have to spend crazy money to really make it something special and and to meet your needs. Stuff evolves over time, but I really feel like you and I have both done a good job at building what we need and making an environment for ourselves where we can be productive. And that's what counts at the end of the day. None of this matters if I don't come out here and do work. So I want to make it a place where I want to be. One of my favorite things in the office I haven't mentioned, but I have used during this episode is the K bass bell. Uh, (laughs) You know, when, no, really seriously, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you heart to heart here. When, you know, Stephen came on the show, I was a little nervous. You know, we were losing Katie, who had been a host for many years, and bringing a new one on. I didn't know what the audience was going to do. And, you know, Steve and I have been friends, but, you know, it's always a different thing. You start recording. And right before, I think the very first episode we recorded together, this Amazon box just shows up on my doorstep. And I'm like, what is this? I didn't order anything. And, and Stephen sent me this bell, just kind of a reminder of the start of our tenure together here with Mac Power Users. So I love having it here. And it is... In fact, I'll give it a ring. (laughs) And it's memorialized in the Mac App Store. So (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yes, it is in the Mac App Store. In fact, they took a picture of me ringing the bell. I was really hoping that would get in. Oh, that would have been awesome. All right. Well, that's our setups. Um, You know, we have a forum where you could share some of the stuff you've done in your studio, your setup. We'd love to see it. And share it and let us know what's cool and what worked and didn't yeah, work. There's even a home screens and office setup category. So I'll, I'll link directly to that. Yeah, that was my idea when we made it. I guess I should have remembered that we have that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, like there's some great, there's some, you know, Roger is the guy who gave me the idea for the Kaizen phone. There, there's some really smart folks out there. So I it's, do share your, your setups yeah. out there. It's always fun to see yeah. what other people are using. There was a photo a few months ago of a guy who built a desk for his wife and it is like, an incredible piece of furniture. There's some really cool stuff in that category. Yeah, it's awesome. We have the best listeners. It's true. All right. Uh, thank you to our sponsors today, 1Password, Omni Group, Squarespace, and Linode. We are the Mac Power Users. You can find us over at relay.fm slash MPU. You can find the forums at talk.macpowerusers.com. And we will see you next week.